Section 4.3 Monotonic Functions and the First Derivative Test right, Let's start with uh, Corollary 3 since this is a continuation of all about applications of derivatives in particular this would help us with the shape of the graph like finding how whether it's the function is increasing, decreasing and therefore we'll be able to locate local extreme values like local min and local maximum. Now okay let's begin. Suppose f is continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on the open interval a b. Okay so we have f continuous on a closed interval a b and then it's differentiable in the interior a b of uh, that interval. Okay so if the derivative is positive at every point in the interior then f is increasing on that interval. If f prime is negative that means it's less than zero okay it's negative it's less than zero at each point on the interior a b then f is decreasing. Well let's see just for a moment what that mean, means. Remember that if the derivative is positive that means the slope of the line tangent to the curve would be positive. So there's your positive slope. You see how the graph is indeed increasing. So if let's say you have another graph, let's say going this way. Okay? And then we take the derivative at the point and take the slope, then we see that the slope is negative. So that see how it's decreasing here it's increasing. So let's look at an example. Okay, we're asked to find the critical points of the function uh, x cubed minus 12x minus 5 and it says identify the intervals on which f is uh, increasing and as well as decreasing. So the first thing we have to do is find the critical points because remember critical points are where it's the derivative is 0 or undefined. So let's try this taking the first derivative, right? Because remember, if uh, we've got f of x equal to x cubed minus 12x, take the derivative and that's just 3x squared minus 12. And how do you find the critical points? Well, you set it equal to 0. So let's go ahead and solve this. So we have 3x squared, put 12 on the other side, so it's equal to 12. Divide both sides by 3. Right, so that we continue and we get, so we have x squared is equal to 4. And so if we take the square root of both sides, that will mean that we have to put plus or minus. So x is either negative 2 or positive 2. So these are what we call our critical numbers. Then the next thing we have to do is to get the critical points, you plug in x equal to negative 2 into the original function to get the critical points and 2 into the original function to get the y value. Okay, now the next thing we do is we make a table to identify the intervals on which uh, f is increasing, so that means it's positive there, and decreasing, that means the derivative is negative there. Okay, so here we see that we will concentrate on the derivative. All right, so to, to be able to do that, to find out the sign of the derivative, we uh, partition your number line and break it up into sections where it's subdivided by the critical numbers. Okay, so remember the two critical numbers were negative 2 and 2. So let's go ahead and subdivide that. So we are now into how many sections? Since we divided the whole number line into, uh, into there's separated by these two critical numbers, and that means this is one interval from minus infinity to negative 2, and then from negative 2 to 2, 2 on out to plus infinity. So what we'll do is we get test points from each section. So let's say we take negative 3 as our test point and I will encircle it just to to differentiate, I mean to distinguish that this is a test point. And then there's 0. That's a very good number to test with. Okay, so these are our sections. And then there's um, a number to the right of 2 
you could use five, you know, but let's just use three for that matter. We could use four, any, th any number uh, greater than two. Okay, and then the next thing we do is to check the sign of the derivative. So well, you plug in negative three into here, and three times that becomes nine. So three times nine minus 12 will be positive. So we see that the sign that if we tested, okay, so three times negative three squared minus 12. And what do we get here? That's just 27 minus 12. It doesn't really matter what the value is, as long as we know that it's positive. Okay, now we take zero. So when we plug in zero, we say three times zero squared minus 12. And what do we have here? That will be negative. Okay, and then here it would be if you plug in 3 again, it doesn't matter whether it's 3 or negative 3, you see that 3 times 3 squared minus 12 is also positive. All right, so we determined the sign of the derivative means if it's positive, the, the slope of the line's tangent to the curve would be sloping upward, then sloping downward, then sloping upward. So here, we see that it's increasing from minus to the left of negative 2, so from minus infinity on out to negative 2. And between negative 2 and 2, it's decreasing. And then from 2 to plus infinity, it will be increasing. So to summarize, we've evaluated, uh, we looked at the sign and we saw that from minus infinity to negative 2, it's increasing as well as from 2 to infinity. So another way of, uh, of looking at these would be through open intervals, we can write it this way. So it's from negative infinity to negative 2. That's where it's um, increasing and then from 2 to infinity. Okay, and then from minus 2 to 2, then we have it's decreasing because the sign of the derivative is uh, negative, right? So remember, you don't have to uh, know the exact value, although we get, got it here, right? But the most important thing is we know the sign because remember, negative uh, 3 is arbitrary. You could have used negative 4 or negative 5 for that matter, okay? so. What's important is we know that it's positive, negative, and then positive. So wherever it's positive, it's in increasing. Wherever the derivative is negative, and that's where the function is decreasing. Okay, so here is the graph now that we can, uh, we can determine now how the behavior because of the signs of the derivative. So you see that here it's increasing and again increasing. And then at the beginning, we looked at the critical points, remember? So you plug in negative 2 into the original function to get the y value equal to 11. You plug in 2 into the uh, original function, and then you get the y value to plot the point where they are. So that then you can just, you know that it's increasing from minus infinity to 2, and then, I mean, minus infinity to negative 2. And then also from the interval from 2 to plus infinity, we see that the graph is increasing and it's decreasing from minus 2 to 2. You see that the behavior of the graph is sloping downwards. All right. First derivative test for local extreme values. Suppose that C is a critical point of a continuous function f and that f is differentiable at every point on some interval containing C. Okay, so what did we have? You have a critical point of a continuous function. And that f is differentiable at some interval containing c. So in other words, you have like a neighborhood, basically, except possibly at c itself. So in other words, it's, there's a possibility that you have a critical point means the derivative is 0 or it's undefined there. So now, if the derivative changes sign from negative, so from negative, that means it slopes downward, to positive, so it slopes upward, then we say that what? 
there f has a local minimum because look if this was the behavior it would be looking like this see that or this way so either case you have negative to positive negative to positive then you have a local minimum at x equal to c now if it changes sign from positive to negative then what do we have well that's the case of number two we say it's from positive going negative then you would have a local maximum at x equal to c all right and or you could even have this kind of situation because still you have a positive slope and a negative slope to the right right now what does this mean that it doesn't change sign well that means it's positive on both sides or negative on both sides then you don't have a change of direction so f has no local extreme value at that point here let's go ahead and look at the uh, different situations you have different critical points here you have c1 c2 c3 and so on let's look at c1 at c1 to the left of c1 the derivative is positive to the right of C1 is also positive, so it's been increasing the whole time, except at uh, C1 where the derivative is zero. Then you don't have a change of sign, okay? No change of sign, that means it's not an extreme value. Now let's look at uh, C2. So we concentrate on C2 to the left and to the right of C2, just around the neighborhood. So in other words, okay, you're around here, so you take a point and the derivative is positive to negative so positive to negative then sure enough when you have a positive to negative you have attained a mountaintop where the, that's where the derivative is zero so that change of sign from positive to negative gives you a local max at x equal to c2 and then keep going so you know from to the left of C3, it's negative to positive, then we have a dip or a valley. Okay, so when we have a valley, then we see that it's a local minimum. And here's a situation where you could have uh you could have an undefined derivative. Because look, it's you don't have um a smooth transition. That's why when you have a corner like this then the derivative does not exist it's undefined but still you can check the signs of um, its first derivative it's positive to negative that gives us a local maximum and then here it's decreasing on both sides same sign on both sides of this critical number so in this case uh, it's not extreme value and then that's just a local minimum on the endpoints again a local minimum on the endpoints then out of these local min and max then you just find if it's in a closed interval okay continuous on a closed interval then you find the absolute minimum and the absolute maximum among the local extreme values